Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. If you remember your grade school civics lesson, then you know that the legislature is empowered to make laws. In Vermont, the legislature is made up of 180 elected members, 150 in the House, 30 in the Senate. Those 180 lawmakers learn and stay informed by listening to their fellow Vermonters. Every year, the legislature hears from thousands of Vermonters, whether it's in a public hearing or a committee hearing. Those voices include the expertise of UVM Extension professionals all across the state. Well, recently, Extension and the Vermont Agricultural Experiment Station hosted its 25th annual legislative reception at the State House. Across the fences, Rebecca Gollin spoke with those involved. Here today is celebrating our 25th annual reception for the legislature. Each year, for the last 25 years, we've brought together faculty and staff and others to show the legislature what extension has accomplished in the past year. And it's just a way of showing how the money invested at UVM into extension comes back and serves the state of Vermont. This year we're looking at some of the water quality work that's a very critical area in the state of Vermont and how to reduce the amount of phosphorus and other pollutants into our waterways. We look at our youth development, 4-H programming is also critical, it's always hard to pick a program each year, but how those uh, youth, our next generation, impact Vermont really uh, depends on how we impact them as 4-H uh, students. And then there's the community development and nutrition, so there are always the programs that we're working at across the state where we're impacting Vermonters lives and we're just here to show that off today. Our College of Agriculture, Extension, the Experiment Station are really all about discovery and new knowledge, innovation and of course and importantly application here in Vermont to our farm related activities and products. How important is UVM Extension to Vermonters? I think it's incredibly important. Uh, not only is it important to us as legislators, because we have witnesses come in all the time on all sorts of issues from UVM Extension, but also from um, just a regular old Vermonter standpoint, uh, they also offer such incredible service. Um, years ago, 30 years ago, I worked at Harlow Farm and a very common occurrence was to see Vern Grubinger or someone else from Extension. Um, I just think it's such a valuable resource and something we really uh, rely on heavily. We hear from folks like Heather Darby on a regular basis and Jen Colby, Sid Bosworth. I can't begin to, to if, I, if I had a witness list in front of me, I would probably name everyone that works there. So, yeah, very valuable to us as legislators and Vermonters. We have huge challenges ahead, huge opportunities. <laughs> and I think what our relationship is with this extension service is pretty simple. They're doing the hard work, they're making sure that we are at the cutting edge of maple syrup production around the world. They're making sure that we're taking climate change in the state as seriously as we can and helping to lead other states in the right direction. What does Extension do that's important? I've always uh, relied on the Extension and the university in general uh, to provide with cutting edge issues, uh, answers to uh, cutting edge issues. Uh, they uh, you know, have an excellent track record of um, doing things right um, and being ahead of the curve. I usually have the extension folks in early in the session because I know they're usually ahead of the game and uh, so I usually have them in in early January uh, to, to hear what they've been doing in the off session uh, so that I'm up to speed on the newest uh, and best uh, procedures to follow uh, through the, the winter months. What is your main message to the legislators here today? Our main message is um, that we're very important, that we're worthy of their support, 
and that we have a significant impact on the state of Vermont. And when you combine those two with our folks being in different locations across the state, working with communities, coming there with knowledge and education, listening and connecting it with all the knowledge and education in the communities, and then turning that into significant programs that make a behavioral difference on the ground, that's very critical for us and it's also critical for the future of Vermont. Well, joining me now is the man you just saw, Doug Lontine, the Dean of UVM Extension. Thanks so much for coming in. It's always great to be here, Judy. So 25 years is quite a tradition for the legislative reception. How did it get started? Well, actually, it goes back to my predecessor, uh, Dr. Larry Forcier, um, who was Dean of the Division, which was Cal's, Rubenstein, and Extension at, for a period of time. And uh, he felt it was a great opportunity to begin to show the legislators firsthand uh, what Extension and the Ag Experiment Station were doing in the state and so it was born. So in the video you outlined the diverse areas of emphasis for UVM Extension. What about the people that Extension serves? What do Vermonters get from Extension? Oh, Vermonters get, I think, a wide range of things. Um, I like to start out with really everything we do is focused on economic development. Uh, from the 111 jobs that Extension creates itself through the eight million plus dollars of grants and contracts it brings in each year. That supports 111 people at Extension to be on the ground working across the state. It comes from all the hops work of the recent few years uh, that have given uh, new individuals an opportunity to raise hops and uh, sell them to our, our growing uh, brewery group here in, in the state and make additional dollars. It's from resurrecting the wheat um, industry here in Vermont. We're now Red Hen Bakeries and others are using 100% Vermont grown wheat to uh, bake some loaves of bread. Uh, so it just goes on and on. It's our 4-H kids. Uh, we deal with about 8% of the population, about 13,000 kids a year. Um, the research all shows those kids in 4-H uh, reduce their risky behaviors as they move through their teenage years and, and it stays with them for, for many years, well, through their life. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole range of uh, different activities that we do that all come back, I think, to economic development. Food safety, the um, Farm to Plate initiative, we probably provide more personnel than anyone else in the state to support that Farm to Plate initiative. So we're very involved across the state. All of it really comes down to economic development. What's the situation with Extension's federal and state funding? Well, uh, never good <laughs> uh, and probably getting worse. Um, we haven't had an increase on the federal side uh, since the early 80s, uh, and we haven't had any increase on the state side uh, for the last eight years. And so that's really our 180 employees, 111 are soft funded. Uh, if you go back uh, 20 to 30 years, um, uh, well, today we have one of every three staff members is base funded it used to be all of them. Uh, we have one of five faculty remaining. Um, uh, that's all that's remaining. We don't have others on soft funds. Uh, so our numbers have diminished in terms of our core. That core is really what supports all the work of the 111. And I'm very concerned about the, the funding uh, continuing to stay flat, which we lose each year with salary increases and inflation. Uh, so that core continues to shrink. And I'm very, very concerned about our future. Well, Extension's work to improve Vermont's water quality is one of the areas of emphasis at the legislative reception. We're going to take a moment to see and hear what's being done. When I started in Extension in 2003, I can bring you to the one field in the county that was cover cropped. And I remember talking to that farmer saying, why are you doing this? I want, I want to do this. I learned about this in college, you know? I want everybody to do this, but I, nobody's doing it. And why are you doing it? And now, you know, there's thousands of acres in cover cropping. Um, and that's really just changed over the last probably two, two years, two to three years. Mm. And that's really exciting. Rooting system that you get somebody like Heather and, and her staff, without people like her that's had experience with this stuff, it's a shot in the dark. This utterly could have failed without somebody there saying, no, we've tried that. Don't use this, try this instead. You need somebody to shine a light in the direction you need to head, and then you need to go find the light switch and turn it on. I don't think any farmer wants to be part of the problem in Lake Champlain. So what we're trying to do is identify practices that make sense for water quality and soil health, but don't mortgage the farmer's productivity or bottom line. In UVM and the farming, the agriculture community is working very hard 
to try to address the issues with the lake. Farmers have five to seven hundred dollars per acre invested in a corn crop that they're letting UVM drive a machine that they've never seen before over the top of. There's risk involved with that and they're taking that risk on uh, to try to do their part. Farmers are very uh, adamant about contributing to the solution. The farmer letting us do this on a lot of acres to try to figure out what works best is a testament to their willingness to participate in the solution with the lake. We're not trying to pollute a lake. We want to keep all our nutrients and everything. You, it costs you money to put them out there, so you want to keep them. If you, you create a good environment for your soils via a cover crop, it's going to give you a great return. You know, with the water quality issues that we're having, you know, it's, it's good for the public to understand that we're, you know, we're good stewards of the land. We want to keep everything intact. It's a win-win for, you know, the, the, the public and the farmers themselves. We've been working with UVM for years. I think one of the biggest things that they offer, or one of the most important pieces that they offer, is they're able to get around and talk to all farmers. And they do the sharing between us that we don't have time to do. Getting to chat with some of the UVM staff and other farmers, that's always a huge opportunity. And them, the, the UVM Extension staff, sharing what they've learned from other farmers. Huge. New ideas. Can't go wrong. Change is risk. What you're doing works. If it didn't work, you wouldn't be doing it. Um, and so we think of something working, things can work in the short term, the medium term, and the long term. Uh, and anybody who's in business has the short term and the medium term are the most important. The long term, it's nice to think about, but you don't make an awful lot of decisions, at least drastic decisions, based on really long term questions. Grass is good, but grasses change, and cropping systems change. Milk prices change, grain prices change. So anytime, anytime that we can affect any one of those uh, issues on a farm, it's a, it's a good thing. We're trying to tr experiment and fail first so that the farmer doesn't, we don't give them bad advice, and they do it on 100 acres, and they fail on 100 acres. I'd rather try something, fail on, you know, 1,000 square feet, and then, as we learn, then we are, we're seeing farmers adopt new things. So I feel like our job in extension is to find farmers who are willing to take a couple risks and try stuff with us, and then try things, tweak them, and as we learn, then have them be adopted on larger and larger acreages. Right. Well, the water quality law signed by the governor last June is also known as Act 64. Can you give us a quick update, Doug, on where Act 64 stands now and what extension's role is in implementing that law? Well, there are a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, I, I think I'd take a little credit from Extension that we've been working on water quality before <laughs> Act 64, and, and and we've been contributing. There's a rules process going for uh, through now, and, and I know our faculty and staff looked at the proposed rules, and I think we had 15 pages of edits and suggestions on how to make it applicable or more applicable uh, in actual operation. And so the second set are coming out, so we're involved in that rulemaking process and giving uh, our uh, input there. Uh, we've also, over the last uh, several years, uh, helped uh, farmers uh, expand cover cropping, which is basically planting a grass cover or some kind of cover in the fall after the corn comes off, and then you use that as a fertilizer, green manure, whatever, in the spring. But since it's covered, the field is covered in the winter time, you don't get the erosion of soil into streams. And we're up to 30,000 acres uh, over this last year from almost zero um, just five, six years ago. So it's been an amazing um, um, uh, opportunity for farmers to keep soil and to continue to help um, reduce and meet the goals of Act 64. Now, so We've got about a minute left, but I, right. I just want to talk about one more thing. Extension recently appointed a new maple specialist. Who is he and what's his role? Mark Iselhart uh, is an employee, as it turned out. He's been at the Proctor for about 10 years, working for Tim Perkins, the director. And when we went through this uh, process, he was by far uh, the best candidate for the job. Uh, and the reason I know that is because in the last two or three months, as he started his job, I've heard from a number <laughs> of producers and other folks and leaders in the maple industry that believe he's a, he's a great follow-on to Tim Wilmot, who served us well in that capacity for 10 years. So Mark uh, is 
a very smart, intelligent, thoughtful individual. He has some ideas, new ideas, and he's working very closely with my associate dean, Dan Lerner, to um, figure out exactly what his program will be to be most effective going forward for the maple industry. Well, Doug, I thank you for coming on and giving us this update. If you have questions or comments for Doug, he'd appreciate hearing from you. You can reach him at the State Extension Office. The toll-free number is 1-866-622-2990. You can also reach Doug by email. His email address is on the screen there. It's doug.lontine at uvm.edu. Great to see you again. Thank you, Judy. Great to be here. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.